generally, I think it's just going to be a waste of time and it's going to get you into more grief than you can possibly imagine. As you know, most of us, we have an 8K block size. Some may have 4 and 32K or 16K, but the vast majority of us have an 8K block size because it's the default. And as you create rows in a table, it's fairly simple what goes on. We allocate some space for a row, and then we fill that row with columns. So assuming a very, very simple example here, I've got the employee number, employee name, salary, hire date, etc. And just to make the visuals nicely, each row nicely fits and squeezes into that nice rectangular block nicely. Normally, of course, we don't do it that way. We simply append rows back and forth just continuously as one row finishes, the next one starts. I would then add more rows and more rows and more rows. And as we keep adding rows, eventually those blocks fill up and we move on to the next block, etc. And that's basically how Oracle works. It's not particularly rocket science. Now, when you do alter table set unused, let's assume we <laughs> this is probably a realistic demo in, in the current uh, climate. Let's assume we're going to do away with salary. When we do set unused salary, nothing actually happens to the data. All we do is we actually make an entry in the dictionary saying this column is now ignorable. We do nothing to the data. And immediately the salary column is gone. It's unusable in any way, shape or form. But for some reason, people think that's not good enough. I, I always think that set unused is, is the intent of removing a column. You can't access it anymore. You can't get it back. It's gone forever. What's the deal? But people get upset because they say, well, there's all these salaries still floating around in my database. I would like to clean them up. And so they go alter table, drop unused columns. Even with this very simple visual, it doesn't take a lot of effort to see what's going to happen. I'm going to walk through every single block and inside every single block, look at every single row and wipe out that piece of data that's no longer required. And there go all my salaries. There is indeed a chunk of free space now in, for every single row that we've touched in that block. But when I come along with a new row, where do you think that's going to fit? Because rows basically have to go in a contiguous space unless later on they get migrated or chained, etc. But out of the box, your typical row goes in a contiguous block. It doesn't matter that you've freed up all this space for each one of those salaries that you've reclaimed. None of them have offered you some space to put raw rows back in. So it's not going to go into that space you've freed up. It's actually just going to go into the rest of the table like a normal row. It's very unlikely that that space that you've got back using drop columns, unless the column is massive and a big chunk of each row, it's very unlikely that that space is going to be used for anything else. It's just going to be dead space. At which point, how would you have to get it back? You would have to actually reorg the table. Now, if you're reorging the table anyway, why would you go to the effort of running the drop columns command? That's a massively resource intensive exercise to walk through every single block in the table and do some work on it. Well, if I'm gonna walk through every single block on the table anyway, why not just reorg the table? Because I'll get the space back then as well as getting rid of that column. Let's look at a demo and see this in real life. So I'm gonna create a table. It's just a copy of DBA procedures. Uh, there's nothing special about DBA procedures. It's just a, a table with not too many columns. So it might keeps my screen formatting nice and it's got an, a nice healthy chunk of rows in it. So it's a table called T. And out of the box, we can see that table has about 600 blocks and it's got no empty blocks because we padded it out. Now I'm gonna basically say, okay, let's take one of those columns, the object name, which is a fairly healthy size. Object name is gonna be up to 128 characters and I'll make it unused. Here's where we can see in the unused tab columns view that yes, we've actually taken one of these columns now from the table and taken it out of action. We've decommissioned it, so to speak. And it says we've got one. And in fact, if we go look in the user tab calls dictionary view, as opposed to user tab columns, user tab call shows you the hidden columns as well. And we can actually see there that the second column, which used to be object name, is now given some cryptic name. It's sys C002, the second column, a bit of a timestamp, but it's hidden, it's gone. And, and there is no way of getting that column back. You can't rename it back to object name, it's gone. 
So let's gather stats on that table. And you can see the table is still at 601 blocks. That's not unsurprising. We haven't done anything. All we've done is change the dictionary. Let's now run that command I said is a waste of time. Alter table drop unused columns. I've gone through and scrubbed every single object name from that table. Now we can see that the count of unused columns is zero. The column has gone from unused to actually totally wiped. If I go look in my user tab columns, it's now ceased to exist. There's no sys underscore column name anymore. The table literally has been effectively reshuffled to only have the columns that we want to retain. But let me go gather stats on this table now. And as we can see, what have we gained back in free space? Nothing. 601 blocks still in use and empty blocks is zero. We actually have gained no blocks back. Now, I didn't put this in the demo, but let's assume object name was actually almost all of every single row, such that when we wiped it, we actually made a lot of these blocks available that they crossed over into a free space boundary. Well, you'd still have a bit of a mess there because now you've got either in your bitmap blocks or free list if you're of that vintage, you've now got this information that says every single block is now effectively on a free list or eligible for new rows. You're creating effectively an insertion potential maintenance problem now because now we have a lot more free list or bitmap block maintenance to do because every single block has gone from used to available for reuse. That in itself might cause you some problems. But even in this simple example here where object name is not a big chunk of the row, we've actually gained no space back. The way I gain it back is to do alter table move. I move the table, regather some stats, and actually you see, now is the only time I actually get those 100 blocks back from 600 down to 500. But if I had to do alter table move anyway, I may as well just do set unused column and then do my alter table move after that. And in obviously more recent versions, I can do alter table move online. So I don't get an interruption to service. The actual act of doing drop unused columns pretty much is a waste of time. Now I will concede if you do set unused column and do alter table move, we will consume a tiny bit more space because what happens is we have to actually store a little indicator in the row saying, oh yes, this was once a column but it's gonna be like a byte per row. It's not gonna be something that's gonna cause you any large kind of performance or space penalty. So for me, it's set a column to unused and then just do alter table move if you desperately need that space back. <laughs>